Welcome everybody to our next um, webinar here at uh, JFD Brokers and also in the name of JFD Brokers, a warm, a warm welcome to everybody out there. It's a pleasure for me to have you here once again, um, so many people around and um, at least if I look to the names, it uh, looks quite international, <laughs> so to say. But anyhow, um, <laughs> The nationality doesn't matter really, but uh, it's always interesting to see that uh, we have uh, really people maybe from nearly everywhere. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe we can do a quick survey here. Uh, you know you have that uh, functionality of go to webinar control panel and uh, normally you can ask questions there, but maybe you would do me a favor if you uh, just write down where you are from or where are you located, um, that might be a nice thing, but uh, just uh, as uh, if you want. Go to webinar control panel uh, reminds me uh, that um, you will see that I have already uploaded uh, the slides of today's webinar <clears throat> so you can download them uh if you like and um, you see already my contact address here um, later i will show a couple of excel sheets and if you have are uh, interested in that ex uh, excel sheets uh, i will make sure that you get them uh, today or for this webinar i will not really directly send you the excel sheets um, because uh, they are too big <laughs> and you might later see sometimes my computer is a little bit slow, but it's uh, simply because uh, of those uh, huge Excel sheets, but uh, uh, you will get a Dropbox link and uh, then you can um, I have those Excel sheets uh, as well. Oh, I forgot to mention today is the 26th of April uh, 2018, seven o'clock at least uh, in Germany. And I see we have people with different times here. We have people from France, from Bulgaria, from Italy out there and still some people out of Germany here. <laughs> That's nice um, to have those in the um, the English webinar, um, but anyhow, you know that uh, I have always the same webinar twice, once in German and once in uh, in English, so the other one has been uh, yesterday. But let's come to the topic of today. How are these how are these seasonals? Does it work or how can we do something out of that? Sounds like it's strange title of a webinar. Let me rephrase what we finally will have. We have we will have the answer to the question when is the right time to trade for a given forex pair in, and in which direction? And that is the answer of hourly seasonals. We go through a sub-universe of uh, forex. Um, in total, I will look to 28 plus one forex pairs. Uh, the plus one is always gold uh, because I treat gold as a uh, forex pair, pair as well. And 28 is the combination of all possible uh, forex pairs uh, out of uh, seven base uh, currencies. But um, yeah, that will be the answer. When is the right time to trade which pair in which direction respectively we will use one ema um, for each um, forex pair in order to get that answer and we will try and we will establish that statistical edge another title for today's webinar would be how to find a statistical edge a probability advantage for trading um, and that might be a, another guide here for, for you um, how to do something by your own for similar tasks or something yeah really similar. And that's exactly what we do. We go for a statistical edge for trading and um, that's exactly what we do here today. And we use that concept already once and, and uh, you know that kind of strategy I called Ducks day of the week seasonal. Um, and at that point in time, we use an EMA, yes, for the ducks, <clears throat> but on a daily basis. Um, and we use the day of the week 
as an additional filter for trading directions. And today we do something similar, but we will not use the day of the week. Instead of that, we will use the time. Do we have uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, a.m., p.m., and then ask uh, exactly the same kind of question. So that's how it works today. Um, but first of all, you know, I have always to show once uh, that slide here. We talk about trading strategies. <clears throat> and finally, if you adapt those kind of ideas, uh, numbers, I, I put here my slides. Um, of course, you trade on your own, you know that, um, and on to your own responsibility. But that I think is uh, fair enough. Good. In a little bit more detail, what is it about today? So we will short recap about seasonals in general, uh, so that everybody is on page here, um, that we know exactly what we are talking about. If I talk about seasonals in general, and uh, of course I don't, will not talk about springtime or summertime, wintertime. No, it's not meant that way. It's to look for something which is repeating by its own, like uh, to have summer, to have winter, and so on. So. That's the basic concept, and yeah, let, let's um, do that later. And um, when I started the um, investigation of hourly seasonals, um, I just created um, two additional uh, charts. Uh, let's call them preliminary uh, considerations here. And it's simply the answer to the question, at what point in time we have the biggest moves during the day. And even that might be of interest as well if um, you have strategies who look for um, more volatility, more moves, um, then that will be the answer as well. And then we do exactly that transfer of DAX daily seasonal to the H1 Forex market. So H1 is, stands, of course, for the time frame. So we look for hourly changes and uh, we will look for the Forex markets here, as I mentioned. I will share with you the results and, of course, how to use that concept for your, for your own practical trading. Let's start with a short recap of seasonals in general. And um, the next three slides are from the original development of the Dux Day of the Week seasonal. And um, what we have here is what I call the mother of all seasonals. And of course, if I talk about seasonals, then the best is to talk about climate. And what you see here <clears throat> is um, the climate situation where I live, that's in uh, close to Dresden, and uh, the recordings are uh, done at the airport, that is the Dresden Klotsche. Anyhow, what do we have here? Of course, we have the temperature during the year from uh, for each month, uh, daily high and daily low. And uh, there's an additional thing here, how many days uh, we have below zero. Um, anyhow. That's typical what we have here. In summer, temperatures are high. In winter, temperatures are low. Oh, God. I know <laughs> that's nothing new. And you, you might say, yes, I know that. But how's the concept? If you get the task to predict the temperature for July, um, for July this year, then um, for, for Dresden, then you will get, you will have an immediate answer. Mm, I would predict 24 degrees. That's easy. Um, and that's exactly what we do with that. We know you, you would not come to the conclusions. I predict for July in, in Dresden, uh, 10 degrees. Definitely no. And you know that you are much close to the actual values if you go for something like those uh, mean figures we have within the chart. And to say five degrees for July, no. And we use that kind of repeating behavior for climate, and later we use it for trading. And the basic idea behind is that things repeat. Why can we say even at stock markets or forex markets that things repeat? Think about 
what is the what are the drivers for what what we have at, at uh, within our markets finally it's always fear and gear that's two elements which control a lot and since that element is not changing it was the same 10 years ago it was the same 100 years ago so therefore i think um to say markets repeat it's not that bad okay that is climate that's easy that's easy stuff the first thing we can go here uh, in order to go a little bit more to to uh, markets uh, we are used to is um, the most well-known stock seasonal and that is what it's called the dow jones four years election cycle the story behind is quite simple we know that every four years we have elections in the United States. And the author here uh, has divided the period of, of uh, election in, let's say, four sub-periods. The year of election, the post-election year, the midterm year, and the pre-election year. And then he did an analysis for the last 100 years of Dow Jones. And that is the answer so we have a typical behavior for the different years of election or within uh, that four years uh, cycle and you see for example that the third year here is more or less a flat year so at within that year mm, to go long it's not the best idea for dow jones but for example in the pre-election year first half of that year uh, looks great to to have strong movements to the north and that's what you, uh, you can do with that kind of uh, statistics here so it is a seasonal because something repeats in this case on a four-year period and we can use that at a, as a statistical edge for trading and that's what we try to achieve. So um, from now on, I think in two years, uh, we should go long for Dow Jones. Um, that's um, a statement out of that kind of chart. But now let's talk about the problems with those kind of seasonals. At least I have a problem with those kind of seasonals. And my problem is that the statistics behind are in most cases really pure or weak however you call it look for example for that uh, um, picture here of course we have 100 years dow jones but we use a four-year cycle so that means we have more or less an average only of 25 numbers to have something out of 25 numbers called statistics is always mm, not that good so if you look for long-term seasonals like other people are doing in in terms of uh, winter springtime or um, something like that and use the last 20 years so they have always the same problem the statistics is really pure but how can we improve it? Oh, before that, we have another problem. And the, the other problem here uh, is, uh, especially if you look for uh, underlyings like uh, indices, Dow Jones, DAX, or something like that, then we have that overall trend behind. Of course, we know that during the last 100 years, the Dow Jones has been constantly increasing. Okay, there are dips uh, like financial crisis 2008 or something like that, but we have an overall trend and that is behind that here as well so that makes this picture even more strange or more complicated solution you go for smaller time frames or other kind of seasonals like we did already for the ducks seasonal because there we investigated the individual day of the week and we have 52 weeks that means we have 52 mondays 52 uh, tuesdays and so on per each year and if we now do it for let's say the last 20 years <clears throat> then we have at least 1000 data points 
that's much better than 25 like here in this and today we go in time frame lower and then we have been an even better statistic uh, it's not th that huge better because um we go for the individual hours like this, um, one hour two hour and so on <clears throat> so we have 25 per, per day and if you go for the last uh, 10 or 14 years data then you have about 4000 uh, points per each um, um, hour so statistics will be um, about 4000 but back to the, the the trading setup we have already introduced finally how did it work because we, we use later the same con kind of concept uh, therefore I repeat that here as well <clears throat> we use an EMA as a pre-filter and we ask ourselves for the uh, DAX uh, day of the week seasonal is the open of the current day or the, the day of interest is that open above or below a certain EMA and in this case it has been a period of 40 and if the answer is we are above that EMA, we simply call that market situ situation a bull market. Uh, that's maybe a, a, a weak definition of bull or beer market, but it works. Uh, and I don't care really about it. It's more to, to separate the one from the other. And that separation is done by looking, is he open above or below the, that EMA? And in case we are above, then we have three days, Monday, Thursday, and Friday, we go for long. And on the other two days, we go for a short trade. And in in the beer market, it's exactly the other, uh, other way around. We open the trade, we have a stop loss for the trade. And if the stop loss has at, the, uh, at 10 p.m. German time, um, not reach the stop loss, then we close the trade. We don't have a take profit, that's all strategy works great um, that's the reason why that strategy is part of the jfd basket portfolio as well uh, it really uh, works great it's that simple and we try to do now the same stuff for forex but one time uh, scale down the road uh, meaning h1 okay and in principle we try to adapt everything like this one here. As I mentioned, I want to share with you two results before that. So those are general considerations on how the market moves and when. And let me explain a little bit more what we have on the axis here. Uh, the x-axis, you see numbers like, and uh, I explain it, uh, especially the uh, reason for that is we, we have later always that kind of uh, x-axis or separations. So if you go for, uh, we have a 0, 1, and up to 23. And what does it mean? Simply, the first point here at 0 is the move, the percentage move between 0 and 1 o'clock. So I measured the percentage move from um, open to close, or better, other way around, close minus open divided by open. So then I have a percentage move. And I went for the absolute numbers. So everything is positive. No um, consideration of direction of the move, whether it's a long or short move. And then I average everything along the last 14 years for each individual hour. So once again, x-axis are hours. So 11 stands for 11 o'clock. And um, all numbers here is always German time. So if you are living in another time uh, zone, then you have, might have to shift it here. So everything is in um, German time here. And y-axis? Yeah, is that average of percentage move, in this case, uh, the absolute move. And of course, we can see waves. And that wave kind behavior is really, I think, uh, standing for the three um, different regions uh, of the world. So starting at the early morning, so let's call it the, the Asian session, the Asian guys start trading. And that already increases the, the average move. And then at eight, nine o'clock, the European 
take over. And then later, the United States comes on top. And therefore, and finally, we have the highest um, moves percentage-wise uh, within the time frame between 2 and uh, 5 o'clock. So that's a little bit like the average volatility. And the other thing, which is quite interesting here, uh, is if you look a little bit uh, more in detail and you can have uh, the Excel sheet of uh, that as well so then you can better um, differentiate between the different uh, colors and uh, symbols but I can tell you at least um, out of my head that on top of uh, all here is gold so the biggest moves we have percentage wise in gold and that's exactly uh, that line here, that brown line. And the smallest moves we have in uh, Euro Swiss franc. So that's um, as expected. And uh, I think uh, next to that uh, I'm, is something like like Euro British pound. I think that is uh, that blue here and so on and so forth. And the other one which are more pronounced to uh, more moves, bigger moves, are those uh, related to currencies um, with Japanese yen. So we have that three-wave behavior, um, Asian, European, um, American. So that helps maybe everybody when it comes to the question, hey, uh, if I need volatility, you have the answer here. And that was an absolute move. But now I did the same and average really the moves with in or um, um, including the sign because we, sometimes we have positive moves when sometimes we have negative moves. Uh, that picture looks noisy and that the only reason I, I show or uh, share that picture with you it's um, uh, what I call a little bit like an artifact. Um, so we have the different uh, symbols here and what surprised me because I expected that noisy behavior, no special uh, direction at a certain time because we are looking for 29 different forex pairs um, and along uh, the time uh, or the, the, the time of the day and I would not expect any, any um, bias for anything but you see at 10 o'clock in the evening, um, most of the Forex pairs in average go south. So you see that, that peak here and that surprised me. And uh, yesterday I asked already uh, whether somebody has a good idea why that might happen here. And um, maybe I can tell you a little bit here that the, the order is <clears throat> that the biggest move at 10 p.m. is Canadian dollar uh, Swiss franc and then some other uh, currencies um, with uh, Swiss franc um, are here. So why the hell do we have a bias south for those forex pairs? It's really surprising. And uh, somebody yesterday um, gave me a very good hint of why that might happen. And the reason behind is we have that spread widening. So the spread goes up and that means that the bid price is maybe going a little more south. And since we have only the average uh, for the last 14 years here, so in average, we see that spread widening. That might be the reason. I have no idea. But that would not explain the 3 o'clock uh, one. But anyhow, uh, let's just keep that here uh, as an interesting um, Example, uh, the other one is much more meaningful because then we have the average move. But now we want to know at what point in time at the day for which forex pair we should go for long or short. Uh, let me explain how I did that kind of uh, that kind of analysis. So once again, I start with an EMA in a chart. Not really. I'm not really looking to charts now uh, because I do that analysis for the last 14 years of um, historical prices I have. But we use that EMA once again to separate our markets 
into something more bull or beer market. So, and we investigate those independently. What do I mean? I have two possible situations. At a certain point in time, let's let's look for the three three o'clock um, candle in the morning, and at three o'clock we look whether the open of that candle is above a, near, a certain EMA value or below a certain EMA value, and then we do that averaging independently for the one which are above or below that EMA. It's only for separation purpose later. And that kind of investigation we do for, let's call it, all 24 hours. So we have 24 candles a day, and we do that kind of investigation independently. So the target is later, maybe we will realize that for, just fictively now, at 3 o'clock, if we are above EMA, then the gold price for the next hour has an edge to north. That would be great. If we know something like that, or another example, that at 10 o'clock, if Euro US dollar is below a certain EMA, uh, 20, um, an EMA 20, then we can expect that we have a statistical edge that the price goes within the next hour, typically north or maybe south, but we will know that. That's the kind of statistical edge we try to derive here. The question at what time at the day and with what EMA we have an edge in the long or short direction. And uh, somebody is already asking, uh, what is EMA, uh, or what is EMA in general? Oh no! So it's not the um, the EMA period; it's uh, just the EMA itself. So EMA stands for uh, exponential moving average. That's uh, the abbreviation for that, and you find that within every any chart software. So, um, for example, if you look for for that chart here. Um, just an example. Uh, we have here Euro British Pound, and you see that red line here. And that red line is an EMA, an exponential moving average. And um, within the chart software, you have it uh, here under indicators. And um, then we have moving average. And if you throw that indicator here, then you can uh, manipulate the period. And later, I will talk about EMA periods 50, EMA period 100, and that's exactly that number here. The only thing which is wrong for my investigation with respect to that chart here is we do everything for H1. Um, so, um, and then we, we we look, for example, for that point in time here, we have three o'clock in the morning and you see big move um, to the north for whatever reason. Uh, no, it's, I think maybe that's the wrong time. It's, um, ah, anyhow, uh, so that's, that's the, uh, the story about EMA. Okay. So the, the, the final uh, thing we, we want to know is that kind of edge for a certain situation above or below EMA. And then what is the um, the most probable next candle? Is it a long candle or is it a short candle? And um, let me directly jump into what I have done. Um, and let me explain uh, that kind of Excel sheet. And I will enlarge it a little bit and I hope you can follow me uh, right away. First, in that line, um, we have, I have done the analysis for, for, for gold, uh, as you can see from the symbol. And later within that table, and you can have it, you will find for all EMAs those specific values. Um, but at the head of the table, um, they are the best ones, the best for each underlying. And you can see already, okay, the best um, EMA to get 
the best separation for the best hour uh, would be an EMA of um, 151 or if you use 150 it's more or less the same result but anyhow but but now let's let's go a little bit deeply uh, deep into the um, into that table here what I, because you will see the numbers later uh, more and more often here so we we have within that uh, column that's a zero so it's a um, zero o'clock if you say that so it's the beginning of the day I'm not sure whether one could call that a zero o'clock but anyhow so uh, that's the time and if you have a number here like a plus value 0.02 what does it mean it means that if the open of that candle at zero o'clock is above an EMA 150 then typically the candle is a long candle so you see within my excel sheet here we have above EMA so all those uh, numbers here are values if we are above that 150 EMA you see okay the first hour of the day would be a long candle and the second hour at one o'clock would be slightly short and so on and so forth and then we can go um, through that table and see or we can look for what I call what is the best oops that's not uh, so what is the best candle for a trade in principle you can see some prediction here for any hour so you can ask even for uh, 11 o'clock for 12 o'clock for one o'clock once again in the afternoon and so on and so forth and always what if our open is above a certain EMA and then you can see the typical direction but later we think about trading so we not only need to have the direction we need strong moves so we would look for numbers which are huge within that investigation here and but that's how what we do next we will simply jump into what's the best number and the other step we will do in a minute is we will look for equities out of uh, that kind of analysis to see if we would trade it exactly like that to say okay at 12 o'clock if my the, the open of the candle is above that ema we go long and then we look for the equity of the last uh, 14 years but here you can see i have done this analysis for being above the ema and sometimes it would be a good idea at some point in time uh, during the day it would be a good idea to go long and at other hours it would be a better idea to go short and the same i have done for below ema because of course we, we can um, our open of that candle can be below a certain, uh, certain EMA and then we have the other numbers so you see here already that statistical edge sometimes it's going long sometimes it's going short and I have been interested in what are the best times for each forex pair and that kind of analysis I have already summarized for you for you uh, within one slide and let's uh, directly look to that and you can see here the, the summary the for gold the best EMA is the 150 the best time of the day is two o'clock afternoon at two o'clock in the afternoon we would have to look above or below and if we are above the EMA with our open then and that is meant here by that plus one instead of minus one it would be a good idea to go long for exactly one hour at least that's the kind of uh, investigation i have done just going for one hour long and if you would be below that ema it would be a better idea to go short and you see another symbol like british pound japanese yen then the best separational EMA would be an EMA of 50 
And the best point in time for trade during the day would be four o'clock. And once again, above, we should go long, below, we should go short. But sometimes it's vice versa. Uh, for example, next one here, New Zealand dollar Swiss four, EMA seven, we should trade at midnight. <laughs> okay, that might be not the most uh, time of uh, favor, but mm, at least the analysis uh, is done that way. And you see for each Forex pair, the EMA is the best um, point in time of the day to trade. And we see some good examples like uh, in the afternoon, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, Euro, Japanese yen, 4 p.m. Great, we can use that. That's the statistical edge, but that's not all. We need more. Whenever it comes to statistical at to a statistical edge, the next question is, is that edge big enough to even um, earn the costs of trading as well? You know that we have seen thousands, or that's maybe too much, but uh, of strategies which have a statistical edge. But when it comes to trading, so when we incorporate the costs of trading like spreads, uh, commissions, those strategies break down, so they do not work anymore, since we have at least to earn the costs as well. And you know, whenever you open a trade, you are instantly in the minus, at least by the spread. So uh, that's uh, what a lot of people unfortunately forget. So therefore, we have to look not only to the edge that we know we have that statistical edge, we have to look for the equity and we have to include spread definitely and of course we are trader we would like to uh, to see equities of that kind of strategy an equity would mean to trade exactly that rule like in that table here every day always for gold at 2 p.m we make our decision long above short below EMA, and then we want to see the equity of that kind of strategy. Okay, let's prepare for that. So, um, uh, more or less everything I, I mentioned already. <clears throat> so, up to now, we have only the edge. So, we know the typical movement, the direction of the move, but we need to incorporate the spread as well. And maybe another idea um, for a normal trade, we can set a stop loss. So maybe it's a good idea to have a tight stop loss for that kind of strategy as well, um, <clears throat> because we can use that stop loss. And maybe from time to time we reach a stop loss level, but for all other, we just wait to the end of that hour and then we stop out that, that trade. That's the philosophy of um, the next um, Excel sheet, because we want to see equities. Let's go for that. And I hope my computer is fast enough um, that we don't have to, uh, that often a set clock here. Let me explain a little bit how that sheet here works. Um, or maybe let's start with the equity because you, you, I think everybody is looking already uh, to those <clears throat> equities. So we look for the last 14 years of data and you see already that uh, I started with the 2004 uh, with the data here and I simply summed up all those percentage moves, moves for that kind of rule I mentioned with, um, within my, my um, last slide. So we use an EMA of 151. So we use the time 14 and we use the time for uh, um, the same time for being above EMA or below EMA. And the equity has three lines here because we, um, for each day, we have one of those two situations. At two o'clock, we might be above EMA. Then we go for a long trade and therefore um, we have that direction above plus one because we go for a long trade. And if we are below EMA, we go for a short trade. And you see the individual equity for all 
above and the individual equity for all below that's a red one and instead of the blue one and of course we can sum both up and then we get the yellow one it doesn't look that bad uh, it's a nice equity um anybody i think um would like to have within his trading account but a short view on how i do that kind of calculation of course i start with those hourly uh, data in this case gold gold prices um, all the data have an open a high a low and a close value uh, like always for an h1 uh, candle and then i do all those calculations like am i above ema yes or no um, am i exactly at point in time in this case 2 a uh, 2 pm and then I go for the calculation of the trade, or in this case, it's not a real trade, it's just the percentage uh, change, and then summing up. That's how that Excel sheet works. And you might use the same Excel sheet for other underlyings, then you have to exchange the data, and you might use it for other email values. You can try by your own if you like. You can um, go for other uh, EMA values or you can go for other times and other directions. But now, as I mentioned, that's only statistical edge. Now let's go for spread. So, because we, we, we open the trade at the open of the 2 o'clock candle and we close the trade at um, 3 o'clock. That's not a long time period. So the price doesn't have that much time to change huge. So the spread definitely will make our result worse. And now you see, um, we have to wait a little bit. Um, so I changed the spread from zero to 0 0.1, which is okay, at least at JFT. And you see, oh, oh, we lose already some profits here. Um, and that's simply because of spread, because spread always works against us and we have to pay that spread. And if I go for even 0.2 uh, spread, uh, result uh, will be worth a little bit more, um, but still profitable. The good thing is, and now I come to the right hand side of my Excel sheet, I said, let's introduce a stop loss as well because we can use a stop loss um, value let me change um, spread back to something which is typical at uh, jfd that is uh, 0.1 for gold and i use here a stop loss level of 0.4 percent what does it mean we would open a trade at let's say gold price of 1200 and then our stop loss would be in a distance of 0.4 percent that's all and then we if we have a stop loss, of course, we can calculate all trades in that universal unit, which is called R. That's a single letter, but it stands for if we um, reach stop loss, then our trade would be a minus one, minus one R. And profits are measured in the same unit, just in R. The good thing about that is if you do it, um, you can multiply with any euro number, then you have directly an equity in euro. So in this case, that equity here is in uh, in R. And if you multiply it with 100 euro, which would mean that you always risk 100 euro for each trade, uh, then you, you can put two zeros behind and they have everything in euro. Doesn't look that bad. Um, so we can change stop loss and uh, try to improve equity as well. But that 0.4% is not that bad, um, uh, I can tell you. Um, but you see, we can use stop loss to a little bit further increase the equity. Um, and it's more like a typical trading situation because uh, if I, as I say, say in every web webinar, if you open a trade, we should know where to put our stop loss. And that's uh, what we do here. 
and the distance would be 0.4%. Doesn't look that bad. And especially, even if you go for higher spreads, you will see that since 2006, um, the, the equity is constantly increasing, which is fine. And the, the reason a little bit behind that, uh, especially for higher spreads, that in the very beginning of um, that equity here at 2004, we suffer from a totally different uh, situation. At that point in time, the price of gold has been 400. And a spread of 0.2 is percentage-wise um, bigger than as today. So it's easier today with a spread of 0.2 to earn money than at a gold price of 400. And you see then we have a good increase in equity here as well. So strategy works even with a real trade. And the funny thing is what we would do here, trading that kind of strategy is we only have to look at 2 p.m. Are we above or below that EMA? We know which direction we go for. And at 3 p.m., we close the trade. That's all. We are only for one hour in the market, and that's all. And on the other hand, you can think about, hey, I might use those kind of input, those times, those EMAs, start a trade, and further manage the trade discretionary. What, what would mean maybe after that one hour, we are in, a, in profit, you might... Uh, go for for um, you might go for for a stop loss increase to break even something like that and then you close the trade at the end of the day you um, put a take profit level for the trade you can just use that one single table as an input for discretionary trades as well um, so therefore that has more than just to have that kind of automated traded trading like within that Excel sheet here. That is not a single example. Let me, that you have at least seen one additional example here. Um, that's the situation for, for um, Euro, US dollar. Looks great again. That means we have a good increase here, uh, a strong probability advantage different EML value, different um, point in time. So it might be a nice um, time for people normally at work uh, over the day, but at 6 p.m. Uh, we can go for one single Euro US dollar trade. Situation would be if open is above uh, that uh, 44 EMA, we would open a short trade. That's why here we have that minus one. And if we are below EMA, <clears throat> we would open a long trade. Those rules really sound trivial, simple. But remember, the Ducks day or week seasonal is as simple as that one here. And it's already traded since uh, more than a year, uh, quite profitable. Once again, we need to consider spreads as well. So if you go for a spread of uh, one BIP, which is uh, fair enough and would already incorporate commissions as well, um, strategy works still, as you will see in a second. It always takes a little bit of time because we have 90,000 candles uh, within that Excel sheet. And therefore, uh, calculation um, needs some time. You see here um, just uh, the percentage changes or summing up the percentage changes. And here the results in, in R, in um, the risk unit R, and it works as well. Quite well. Of course, we have drawdowns as always. Um, when it comes to trading, we have drawdowns in our equity, but still it works. And it will work even better if you do more with those trades because to restrict those trades for just one hour in the market 
some things you don't have to do. Uh, we can use that input and take the trade uh, for a longer time if you uh, want. So that's what's behind hourly trading, hourly seasonal to get exactly that kind of edge uh, for your own trading activity. And let me repeat a little bit here um, if my computer comes back because uh, still it's uh, calculating or maybe it's just uh, it's a minute here um, saving the document once again. Um, but normally it only takes a few seconds uh, then we can go um, for the next step here. We have the data for all 28 or uh, forex pairs and you can look what is a suitable time frame for you maybe you are somebody who is always uh, uh, still um, awake at uh, midnight then you can uh, go for those which uh, start at zero o'clock here that's exactly starting at midnight maybe you are um, at um, working hours uh, not in the situation to trade but then you might uh, go for those other um, underlyings like euro us dollar because there we have a good um, time exactly at uh, six as you remember it's exactly that table and if you want to look much more in details you can have that previous excel sheet uh, with all ema values and calculations um, for all the other times other ema values so everything is uh, is in there finally we know now that we have a statistical edge we can use exactly that for our trading activities and all we have to do is at that point in time looking to that table we have to look are we above or below the ema and then we know the trade direction the preferred trade direction for that underlying for that hour of the day and that's exactly what we can use um, for our trading you have seen the equities already which is good that so it's not a single event which works um, we have statistics behind behind it's always about 4000 uh, data for each individual hour which is good so it's not a statistics uh, like um, um, that uh, we have seen for the dow jones so um, it really works um, it works out yeah definitely and still my computer is working with himself um, so I want to have that uh, summary slide here so we know that it, the concept of um, hourly seasonals work we know the times we know that we can transfer that to profitable trading you know the rules for that um, let me emphasize that you should go only for those pairs which have low spreads because if you go for something like um, British pound uh, Canadian dollar uh, or Australian dollar then the spreads are that huge compared to the edge that it will not work for profitable trade on a long run but still no one as in my last line here, no one forces us to close a trade already after one hour. I have done all the calculations exactly like closing that trade after one hour in the market. But we can use that edge for longer trades as well. And I have done some analysis on that as, uh, already. Um, it will be a topic of uh, another webinar. And then we can extend our trading periods here and look for even other kind of trading um, methodologies here. So that is hourly seasonal. So does it work? Answer yes. Let's go for those pairs with low spreads and uh, we need a good broker for that and with JFD we have exactly that kind of broker so we have been able to transfer the concept of ducks seasonal with a day of the week to hourly seasonals forex pairs 
So we have extended our trading universe, universe to 29 um, possible pairs. So we have got um, enough um, underlyings to even increase our trading uh, activities if we want. And that's, that kind of concept works and that's good. Okay, that's for today about hourly seasonals and their work. And let's go for the next webinars in May. I have scheduled already two webinars as well. You will find them on the event uh, calendar of uh, JFD. If you are interested, just register there as well. And uh, one other remark, you will always find the recordings of uh, that we, uh, webinar uh, on the JFD YouTube channel. And um, they will be online uh, from tomorrow morning. And uh, if you want to repeat yourself with one or the other aspect of that video, just uh, uh, take your chance to, to uh, go for those recordings. Or if you have a specific question, just send me an email to s.friedrichowski at jftbrokers.com um, and um, I will make sure that you get your answer. Okay, that's for today. Enjoy the evening and see you again, hopefully, in May. Bye-bye.